Hello friends, welcome back to my channel and uh, today we are back with another interesting tutorial. So as you can see in this uh, video, we are going to talk about Kubernetes and Docker Swarm. So we will talk about the complete uh, benefits and disadvantage of using Kubernetes and Docker Swarm and which scenarios Kubernetes will be used, in which scenarios you can use Docker Swarm and what is the difference between both of these and you know, uh, what are the usages of all these things so all the, all these uh, in-depth details we will talk and you know based on that you know if you want to choose you know what container orchestration you want to use uh, you would be able to make use of the all discussion what we are going to talk about in this tutorial so at the end of this tutorial we'll be having uh, a complete uh, points of what is kubernetes uh, all about and what is docker swarm all about and what are the benefits what are the use cases all those things we will discuss in this tutorial so it will be definitely helpful for you so keep watching till end of this uh, tutorial to get the complete overview on that so before i get started into this uh, complete discussion i would request you like if you are new to my channel or if you have not subscribed to my channel click on the subscribe button also like my videos give a thumbs up and share my videos with others and also give your feedbacks in the comment section so before we get started on this Kubernetes and Docker Swarm, if you don't know about what is containers, because everybody you know should know what is a container before we can talk about Kubernetes, Docker, Docker Swarm, right? So let's let me give you a short uh, intro on do uh, containers. So in order to understand containers, you also need to understand what the scenario before containers, right? So uh, if you are uh, a developer or if you are an operational guy, you know who have a uh, working on this software development and you want to test or you know install your application so you'll be having your own physical laptops or a server right so you'll be installing the application on the server and that application may need some dependencies for that application to run you may need some do some specific configurations for that applications to run right so all those things you need to set up on that uh, machine or servers so uh, you know when you want to do it on a different machine you have to do all these steps once again from the uh, beginning right so what happens in the usual scenarios you may end up in uh, some kind of problem for your application and your application will uh, fail to run correctly because of you know the difference in the configurations or underlying library requirement or the dependencies on those machines so if there is some changes on that your application will start failing right and in order to uh, solve this problem the containers uh, is brought up and you know which is a lightweight and immutable uh, infrastructure of your application packaging and deployment so these uh, containers will solve this problem of you know the deep, you know uh, applications getting failed because of this configuration library recommend and all these dependencies on different machines so let's see you know what is a container so you can tell container is a you know portable standardized package of your application so what we do is like if you have a you know software or which you want to uh, containerize so what you do is like you package your whole code and also you'll add up your dependency of your application for uh, to run this application quickly and also you know you run a, in any environment so you can use this container from one computing environment to other computing environment because you're packaging your whole application with its dependencies and you know configuration into into a container image so this bundle uh, you know, of this application code together, uh, related uh, configuration files, libraries, and the dependencies, and for the apps to run. So that's what we told, like it's the whole bundle of your application code, uh, together with this configuration file, libraries, and the dependencies of your application to run. So once we, uh, we have this, our container set up, so what we will, uh, how our uh, con uh, infrastructure will look. So we discussed like before the containers, it would be like this, like we'll have individual system where we'll be installing our apps, configurations and everything. But now once we implemented the container, what we will do is we package your application, dependencies, script configuration and everything together. So what you can do is you can use this container uh, image of your application and you can run it on any operating system whether it's a mac or it can be on windows or it can be you know or a linux uh, you know or different flavors of linux so it can be run on multiple uh, operating system because the whole package is already there with the you know the base application script dependency and everything so 
in order to run the container you also need some softwares right so how you containerize your application there it's that is where we uh, comes about this docker so docker you know to talk about docker is an open source platform for building deploying and managing your containers applications so docker is the common uh, one which is available and every, most of everybody may be knowing how to use docker if you don't know i would request you to check my complete playlist on docker where we have spoke about how to set up docker how to create your image in docker how to deploy that into docker hub how to use that to deploy in, you know as a docker containers and all those things we discussed in the playlist which i will link into this video description as well so uh, docker is a software platform to allows you to build, test, and deploy your application quickly, right? So you containerize your application uh, as an image, so you can easily deploy it, you can test it, you can do all those things with uh, Docker images. So this Docker uh, packages the software into a standardized unit called container. So once you uh, package your uh, you know, software as a Docker image, then you can use that to run as a container. And yeah, the, everything the software needs to run, including the library, system tool, code, runtime, everything will be available in that you know um, a docker container and that will use the host uh, kernels and everything to run uh, on top of that so that's the overall concept of docker now let's talk about what is kubernetes because now you understood what is containers and uh, what is docker now kubernetes and docker sum is a little bit different uh, or it's related to docker but it's not as it is as docker now let's see about what is kubernetes so Kubernetes, also called as K8S, uh, is an open source, extensible container orchestration platform for uh, container services and also workload management. So Kubernetes is also related to Docker, but what it's used, it's used to, as an orchestration platform and workload management for Docker containers. So with use, using Kubernetes, you can easily manage and orchestrate your containerized platform. Okay. And this Kubernetes, if you know this past history of Kubernetes, it was originally developed by Google and then eventually they handed over it to CNCF uh, Cloud Native Computing Foundation for the maintenance and enhancement. So along with CNCF, some other the teams are running this uh, pro, you know, project on Kubernetes and they are released as an open source project now. And uh, Kubernetes as a cluster, if you have set up a Kubernetes cluster, you will have uh, worker nodes on which these pods will be running. You will uh, run your pods of your uh, application uh, and inside the pods you will have containers and all these are managed using control plane or a ma manage your node and uh, that uh, will also be part of our Kubernetes cluster. So this ma control plane will manage the pods and worker nodes in the cluster. So that's how the setup will be. So if you want to know more about Kubernetes cluster setup and the whole details, I will link the uh, Kubernetes uh, playlist as well into this video description where we have spoke about how to set up Kubernetes cluster mini cube if you want to set up your test uh, you can also see all the details about Kubernetes in that playlist as well now let's also talk about docker swarm so docker swarm is also an open source container orchestration platform but that is native to docker so this is not a separate uh, uh, you know, uh, application uh, like Kubernetes uh, which is developed by Google and then handed over. This is uh, part of Docker uh, engine and uh, they are they comes along with this uh, Docker uh, things. So you have to set up a Docker uh, host. Uh, once you set up Docker, you need to make, create a cluster so that you know you have multiple nodes and you will have a Docker Swarm setup. So it's it's a native to Docker and uh, Docker Swarm also manages this container and was created to ensure this applications run seamlessly across uh, multiple nodes so you will have a uh, multiple nodes in the docker swarm setup and you will be able to manage it and again uh, similar to kubernetes the docker swarm cluster also consists of docker engines which are deployed as uh, master nodes to orchestrate these uh, containers and also you will have worker nodes on which the services will be running for your application so that's the basic understanding on docker swarm and uh, kubernetes as a simple uh, definitions and what it does so if I have to go in depth, you know, uh, there are a lot of things to do, but this tutorial is more about I want to talk about what are the pros, what are the cons about Kubernetes and Docker Sum, and uh, then we can compare both uh, the benefits and disadvantages of both. Okay. So now let's talk about the pros and cons of Kubernetes. 
So I will start with the uh, pros, the uh, advantages of using Kubernetes. So since uh, Kubernetes is a large and active open source uh, project, there is a big uh, community who is working on it and it's also backed by Google. So it, that is one of the major ad advantage of Kubernetes that it's a big project and there is a huge open source community working on it. And the other uh, benefit is like this Kubernetes is largely adopted in markets. So if you uh, look about this or uh, container orchestration tool, Kubernetes is one of the largely adopted market. And so because of that, it's always tested by big companies like Google, uh, IBM and all those things. And they will have a, a good testing and usage and all those things available in the market. And the another one of the important things is Kubernetes is you can also see Kubernetes in the public clouds like AWS, Google, uh, Cloud GCP or you know uh, Azure, they have uh, managed versions of uh, Kubernetes like AKS or EKS. All those things are available in cloud version as well, so you don't have to set up your own uh, Kubernetes cluster or anything. You can use uh, cloud uh, Kubernetes instance and you can start using it, or you can also go for on-premise uh, Kubernetes. And this is also supported in, in uh, all, all different operating system. Now, in order to you know. Uh, talk about kubernetes the kubernetes is mainly you know helpful when there is a you know large architecture and complex workload so kubernetes uh, is, can handle a big uh, you know structure if, even if your application have a large complex architecture and workload kubernetes can can still manage it and uh, other benefits of kubernetes is like you know it have built in monitoring and supporting and also it have uh, auto scaling like uh, hpas and you know it have uh, auto scaling options and also self healing capacity and also another benefit is like Kubernetes also can give you a you know graphical user interface which you can use it to you know uh, configure your kubernetes systems that's also a big pros on uh, kubernetes now if we talk about cons or disadvantages like uh, the kubernetes as itself the installation and setup is very complex so if for if you're a simple developer if you want to set up a small uh, instance it's a huge complex process to set up the whole Kubernetes setup and installation. So uh, in that case, you know, for you uh, it, to set up your simple uh, application testing, you may need to put a lot of effort to set up your Kubernetes first. And this management of Kubernetes master definitely need specialized knowledge. So someone who is not about, uh, clear about Kubernetes uh, configurations, how to man is write the manifest file, how to configure the networks, all those things, if they don't know, it's very hard for them to manage the Kubernetes cluster. And also in Kubernetes, you need to use additional uh, tools like kubectl or some CI/CD workflows. So you don't have a inbuilt, you know, uh, command lines or you know those things. So you need to have separate additional tools for a complete Kubernetes usage. And the other uh, thing is like since it's a open source, uh, actively used community community working on it. There will be always some patches coming up and uh, you may need to put a little careful to patch on Kubernetes to avoid any workload disruption of your Kubernetes cluster. So these are some uh, pros and cons on uh, Kubernetes. We will uh, talk about on Docker Swarm as well and we'll compare you know, what are some uh, good points from here and some of uh, points from Docker Swarm as well. Now let me move on to the pros and cons on uh, Docker Swarm. So in Docker Sum, as I mentioned, Docker Sum is based on Docker itself. It's native to Docker, so it's uh, built for use with Docker engine. So it's come uh, part of Docker concept, and you can easily set up that. So it, it's uh, you know as part of Docker engine uh, setups, it's very easy to integrate with Docker tools like Docker CLI, Docker Compose. So you can easily integrate uh, all those things with Docker Sum because it's part of Docker native. And uh, the installation process and setup process is pretty simple and straightforward. You can see my tutorials on Docker where we already spoke about Docker Swarm, creating Docker service and all those things. It's pretty straightforward setup with simple commands. You can create set up your Docker Swarm environment. And you know uh, any service tool, tools or softwares that work with Docker will effortlessly work with Docker Swarm as well. And also, uh, you know, like Kubernetes, you don't need any separate CLI or anything. It's in Docker Swarm, you can use Docker CLI and you can easily use Docker commands itself to create your uh, services and all those things in the Docker Swarm. So it's a pretty straightforward and easy process using Docker Swarm. 
Now, when we go to the cons, uh, the major cons is like uh, like uh, Kubernetes, the Docker Swarm don't have a lot of functionality. So Kubernetes have a lot of functionality, a lot of features you can use uh, for a lot of configurations and all this thing. Whereas Docker Swarm, you don't have that kind of features. And also like the extensions or customization is not possible in Docker Swarm much. And you also don't have a GUI interface directly in Docker Swarm, but you can use uh, some other third-party tools like uh, 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 there are a lot of tools uh, you, to use it for uh, Docker Swarm GUI as well. Now you also need to understand that you know Docker Swarm does not come uh, it, with its own uh, monitoring solution but you can rely on some of the third-party applications and you can use that for monitoring Docker Swarm as well. Now let's uh, move on to a direct straightforward comparison with Kubernetes and Docker Swarm. So uh, I would say like the Kubernetes, the installation and setup process is really com complex. That's, that's one of the key points when you have to understand when you are going to work with Kubernetes. Whereas Docker Swarm, the setup and installation is pretty straightforward. And you know, you can handle large and complex environment with Kubernetes. So if you are having a huge uh, complex environment of your application, going with Docker Swarm is not uh, good because Docker Swarm can handle simple environment. So if you have a simple application you want to deploy in uh, Docker Swarm, that would be straightforward. But if you want to set up Kubernetes for that, it's going to be huge time consuming. But if you have a future plan for uh, making your application more complex and more you know, uh, scale, then you have to go for Kubernetes because Docker Swarm may not be able to manage that in the future. So Kubernetes is also more powerful, more complex. So the learning curve is also uh, complex because you need to understand a lot of things to set up Kubernetes, to create all those things. So there is a huge learning curve as well. But Docker Swarm, the functionality is limited, but it's lightweight and easier to use. Now, uh, in Kubernetes, as I mentioned, it have a lot of features of auto scalings like HPAs and other different kind of processes which you can use. And you have a lot of auto scaling and a lot of uh, features in uh, Kubernetes which you can make use of it. But in Docker Swarm, it's more of a manual scaling options which you need to configure it by yourself. And in Kubernetes, you also have a built-in monitoring solutions, whereas you know in Docker Swarm, you need to use some of third-party tools for monitoring. And as I also mentioned, there are other things like Kubernetes also have a, a you know GUI graphical user interface which you can use, but in Docker Swarm, you don't have it inbuilt. You need to use some third-party tools to use the GUI option as well. So I hope uh, this is uh, uh, straightforward information which I wanted to share. What is Kubernetes? What is Docker Swarm? But basically, you know, uh, Kubernetes is heavily used and highly popular compared to Docker Swarm. But still, there are a lot of uh, usage for Docker Swarm. It's easy to set up if you have an environment is small. If your organization is small, you can still go for Docker Swarm. But if you want to have a huge complex environment and workload, then you can go for uh, Kubernetes as well. So that's the overall uh, concept which I wanted to discuss. So I hope it's an informative tutorial. So if you want to watch more tutorial like that, if you like my videos, I would request you to subscribe to my channel. Also like my videos, give a thumbs up and uh, give your feedback on the comment section and also share these videos with your friends, others, so that they can be also helpful to get these uh, latest technologies and languages. So thank you for watching.